our daily readings from the Bible, reading a chapter each day from the New Testament. In 1 Samuel 3 verse 10, the young Samuel said to the Lord, Speak, for your servant is listening. Lord, speak to us today, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our daily Bible reading for Tuesday the 28th of September, and today we're reading from Colossians chapter 2. I want you to know how hard I am contending for you and for those at Laodicea, and for all, all who have not met me personally. My goal is that they may be encouraged in heart and united in love, so that they may have the full riches of complete understanding, in order that they may know the mystery of God, namely Christ, in whom are hidden all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. I tell you this so that no one may deceive you by fine-sounding arguments. For though I am absent from you in body, I am present with you in spirit, and delight to see how disciplined you are and how firm your faith in Christ is. So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. See to it that no one takes you captive through hollow and deceptive philosophy, which depends on human tradition and the elemental spiritual forces of this world, rather than on Christ. For in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form, and in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is, he is the head over every power and authority. In him you were also circumcised with a circumcision not performed by human hands. Your whole self ruled by the flesh was put off when you were circumcised by Christ having been buried with him in baptism, in which you were also raised with him through your faith in the working of God, who raised him from the dead. When you were dead in your sins and in the circumcision of your flesh, God made you alive with Christ. He forgave us all our sins, having cancelled the charge of our legal indebtedness, which stood against us and condemned us. He has taken it away, nailing it to the cross and having disarmed the powers and authorities he made a public spectacle of them triumphing over them by the cross therefore do not let anyone judge you by what you eat or drink or with regard to a religious festival a new moon celebration or a sabbath day these are a shadow of the things that were to come the reality however is found in christ do not let anyone who delights in false humility and the worship of angels disqualify you. Such a person also goes into great detail about what they have seen. They are puffed up with the idle notions by their unspiritual mind. They have lost connection with the head, from whom the whole body supported and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows as God causes it to grow. Since you died with Christ to the elemental, spir er elemental spiritual forces of this world, why, as though you still belong to the world, do you submit to its rules? Do not handle, do not taste, do not touch. These rules, which, you, which have to do with things that are all destined to perish with use, are based on merely human commands and teachings. Such regulations indeed have an appearance of wisdom with their self-imposed worship, their false humility and their harsh treatment of the body. But they lack any value in restraining sensual indulgence. Helen mentioned yesterday that Paul was writing to a group of people in Colossae that he had never met, only heard about. He was writing to encourage them in their faith. It seems that he had heard of the firmness of their faith and the unity of them as a group of believers, a unity they showed through their love for each other, a unity Paul wants to encourage them in. And if we are to be like the Colossian church, that Paul was so thankful for we as a church family, we need to continue to be united together. We need to continue looking out for each other, caring for each other's needs, both physical and spiritual, helping each other to maintain our own walk with the Lord. As a fellowship, we need to continue to be available to each other, supporting each other, looking out for those among us who need a listening ear, a loving arm around the shoulder, an encouraging word. When someone is struggling, let's keep walking alongside them in love and support.
In verse 6, Paul encourages the Colossian church to remember the beginning of their journey. He takes them back to basics, back to the beginning of their walk with Jesus. He says, So then, just as you received Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. Maybe that's a place each of us needs to return to as well. As Christians, it's important that we don't lose sight of or step away from the Jesus we said yes to, however long ago that was. So what does Paul tell us was the beginning? In verses 9 to 15, Paul talks of their spiritual circumcision, a point when they put off their own flesh, a point when they accepted that Jesus had died for them. The moment they decided to say yes to Jesus and to truly know the forgiveness found in the death and resurrection of Jesus. God chose to forgive us by accepting the price paid on the cross by Jesus for all that I have done wrong, not just some of my mistakes or some of my deliberate choosings to go my own way, but all of my sin. There is absolutely nothing left of my sin. Jesus took it all. This is the basics. Because God the Father was willing to let Jesus, his Son, bear all my wrongs, all your wrongs, then we are forgiven and Satan no longer has any power over us. The cross is triumphant. Jesus reigns. Today, let's choose once again to go back to the place it all started. Let's go once again to the foot of the cross and say to Jesus, Thank you for taking all of my sin. Today, may Jesus reign in everything we do, say and think. Let's stay rooted in him. Let's find strength for each moment through our faith in him. Let's give thanks for his love and forgiveness as we remain united in him. Let's pray together. Father God, thank you that you chose to forgive us. Lord Jesus, thank you that you died for us. Holy Spirit, fill us again today with the strength that we need to face each moment. Help us to remain united with you. Amen.